In this video, we are going to uh, see about the register transfer uh, languages and micro operations. The set of instructions which helps in doing the uh, uh, micro operations. So here, first before going to that, we'll have a understanding about the computer architecture. So a computer architecture will consist of control units, memory units, input and output unit. This is what we have seen so far. Now, in central processing unit, we have this uh, arithmetic and logic unit, control unit, and registers. ALU will consist of the registers also. So there are uh, some registers uh, in this uh, ALU. They are hardware units. Then other than that, we have main memory, then secondary storage, and keyboard, mouse, these are all input devices, and these are all output devices. So how the data flows between this? We have a common communication line called buses, through which the data flow from your main memory to all these things, from here to this, uh, sorry, from here to main memory, and from main memory to output, etc. Same way from the secondary memory. Once the data is, uh, we want to save the data in the secondary storage, the data flow from main memory to secondary storage through this common bus. So since it is used for communication, normally bus we use for communication. Here we call the same thing, some set of wires, lines, which are used for transferring data. Okay, that we call it as a bus. This is a, a microprocessor architecture, 8085 microprocessor architecture. This case, uh, this is a slightly uh, big, uh, another version of this. Here, uh, we have, it is a very basic uh, microprocessor, so we have limited registers only. But nowadays, we have more registers than this. They, these are all called temporary, they are uh, temporary registers. That is, W is that is temporary registers, B, C, D, E, H, L. All these things are used for doing calculations. Okay, once the data is taken from the main memory, they will be placed in this because computer, uh, the, the inside logic unit, okay, it is connected only with this. This is not connected with the memory unit, right? So it is not connected directly with the memory unit. So how it can get the data for doing any calculations? So from the memory unit, the data has to be moved to the these registers. And then from this register only, the ALU can access and do whatever the instruction is uh, asked to do. So it has an instruction register other than this instruction register, uh, uh, which is nothing but the uh, instruction will be decoded and it will be executed. What is meant by decoding? What is said in the instruction? So for example, whether it is an addition or subtraction or multiplication or a loop, everything has to be understood. First, they will be loaded, that instruction will be loaded into this instruction register, which in turn will be decoded and understood, and it will be executed based on the uh, timings of the particular instruction. So all those things are controlled by this timing and control. See, all these signals go to uh, the respective forms. Uh, here, if you say accumulator, there is one more register called accumulator. Here, in this microprocessor 8085, the accumulator size of the accumulator is 8 bit. Okay, then we have temporary register. Again, it is an 8 bit register. Then flip, uh, flip top, flag, flag register. It is also an 8 bit register, but within that, only 5 bits are used for checking the status of any addition, subtraction, whatever is done. Uh, if you want to check what is what happened, whether the particular operation executed or not, all those things can be set by this, checked by this flip-flop status bits. And then we have the control signals, interrupt signals, serial uh, IO controls, etc. Now we have the, uh, other than this HL, we have 16-bit register. If you take H and L together, you can, it is a 16-bit register. So as a full 16-bit register also, this can be involved in any calculations, okay, any operation. Then we have stack pointer, program counter, increment and decrement latch. We'll see uh, what are the operations of all these things one by one. And we have address buffer, address data buffer. If you see this address here, we have 16 bit. So we have 16 bit address registers we have. Now in that, uh, data buffer is only 0 to 7, 8-bit data, because we store 8, 8, 
data. If you are going to store 16 bit, then both are combined together and uh, uh, the data will be extracted. Okay, but here we take it as an 88 bit. That is why the data, buff, data, uh, data bus is set to be 8 bit. Whereas, and this is the same address bus, uh, address bus will consist of A0 to A50, that is 16 address lines. But what happened in this, the lower order bit, which is nothing but A0 to A7. Now we call it as a D0 to D7. The same uh, lines are used for traveling of data. So in the case, those uh, eight lines, that is lower order bit, acts as a bidirectional. Whereas the remaining higher order bit from uh, 8 to 50, they act as an address bus. They are in a single direction way. That is, they can take they, they, they can send, uh, when you place the data on the address bus, the flow is only towards memory, not back to the uh, internal registers and all, not to back to the CPUs. That's why it is unidirectional. We will see all these things in due courses, what's the meaning of all those things. And it has power supplies, crystal, which are used for generating the clock signals, etc. Now, uh, so uh, in general, we have these are all the main registers which are in CPU, okay, in central processing unit, other than the memory unit, because all these are interconnected. All these are interconnected to internal bus. Okay, they are connected with external bus with the memory unit. So anything which has to be executed in the inside this, anything which has to be executed in the CPU, first they have to be brought into all these temporary register, whichever temporary register mentioned in the instruction set, they have to be brought into that. And from this only the uh, ALU or uh, whatever it is, it has access. Okay, so this is the rule. So whatever given here is only up regarding the CPU, not the uh, memory unit or IO. Okay. Now we'll go to register transfer language. What is meant by register transfer language? In order to execute instructions, in order to uh, carry over the operations which are given in a program, we need uh, language. Say you have C, C++, Python, etc. But here, what we are doing is basic, uh, that is hardware level uh, language, which is called assembly language. Like that. So they need some uh, symbolic representation. Okay. So a digital system, when you say a digital system is an interconnection of various digital hardware, that's what we are saying. It is a digital system, it is an interconnection of various. Uh, components like registers, ALU, decoders, timing and control signal, etc. Okay, so decoders, arithmetic elements, and control logic. So, in order to control the data which flows within that and whatever uh, uh, we, uh, result we want to achieve, we need then some instructions to be given to the computer. Okay, these modules are interconnected with common data and control. So, that's what we have it. These are all the local internal parts, and that we call it as a bus. So the data from here will be placed here, and from there it goes there. Okay, so if they are not directly contained. Instruction set uh, registry is not directly contained with W, not directly contained with Z, B, C, and so on. Instead, the data from there will be placed in the common. From there, uh, if it is meant for that, then it will take that value. If it is for flag bit, then that will be taken. So likewise. So how it will be taken, whether it is meant for that or not, that comes in instruction set, which we call it as a registered transfer language that we will see now. The operations executed on data stored in registers are called micro operations. Okay, now the result of the operation may replace the previous binary information of a register or maybe transfer to another register. So for example, the data may transfer from H2L or L2D or D2B, et cetera. So whatever case, when the data is transferred from, let us imagine the data is transferred from L to H means the data will be overwritten. Okay, whatever is present in H that is gone. Whereas L is still having that value because only H is overwritten, not L. Examples of micro operation, some of the examples of micro operation are shift, counting, clear, load, add, subtraction, etc. Now the internal hardware organization of a digital computer can be best specified by specifying 
can be best defined by specifying the set of registers it contains and their function. Yes. So how you can define what are all the registers? Because uh, when you design an instruction set, that instruction set must consist of the registers, the handling of the internal operations. It must be able to handle the transfer of data between C to D, B to Z. So which means it must have the, in the instruction itself, it must quote that whether the data is to be transferred from C to B or C to D, et cetera. All those things should be mentioned, which means you must have a good knowledge of what are all the internal components, how many registers a particular microprocessor consists of. That's what here we say. The set of registers it contains and what are their functions. Okay, whether it is storage or just like here, instruction D register. Once you place that at the instruction register, it will be decoded. It will be sent to the instruction decoder. And then what is that instruction that will be understood? So that is a function of this. Whereas B, C, D, they will store only the information. The sequence of micro operations performed on the binary information stored in the registers. So what is the, say when we have given, say for example, when you want to find the sum of n natural number, what you will do first, you will get the input. Okay, for n number, for n, some say sum of n numbers. First, you will get that n. Then, what you will do, you will write a for loop stating that for i equal to 1 to n. Then, inside the loop, you will add the uh, element from 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus and so on till n. So, for that, you will write a logic. So, these are all called steps. Okay, the sequence, first, you are getting the input, and first, before getting input, you will be declaring the variables. So the steps involved that you will be doing it as a sequence. So that is what the sequence of micro operations performed on the binary information stored in the registers. So you must know what are all the sequence to be executed. Okay, the control that initiates the sequence of micro operations. So what are all the controls which helps in doing these micro operations? So that also. So if you the all these things must be specified. The symbolic notation. In order to do that, we have a symbolic notation or any language. You can say in C, you have some different uh, symbolic notation. Say, for example, if a loop, you want to represent a loop, you have for i equal to zero, like that you say, that is a symbolic notation. Now here in micro, in the microprocessor, uh, uh, the symbolic notation used to describe the micro operation transfer among registers is called register transfer language. Now, uh, what a register transfer? If I, before that, we should understand what is a register. A register is nothing but here, what I mean is 8 bit register. Okay. And you represent usually in symbolic notation as capital R, followed by uh, the number of the register. We have already seen B, C, D, E, H, L. Instead of saying B, C, D, E, H, L, you can mention R1, R2, R3. In this, we mention it as R1, R2, R3. That, R1 is the first register, R2 is the second register. And you will mention this with the capital R, okay, followed by the number. Then here we have, uh, this is another picture, shows the position of the bits, 0 to 7, that is 8 bits. Okay, then numbering of it. This way also you can represent, or this way also you can represent. To the left, you would start with 0, to the right, you end with it. So it is a 16 bit register. Like this also you can represent. Another way also here like this, zero to seven, it is uh, lower bits, eight to 15 higher order bits. And PC say this is a program counter. So PC is meant for program counter, IR is instruction register, R1, it is a process register and so on. There I have shown it as a accumulator. Okay, here accumulator, then we have program counter, stack pointer, etc. So this is one way of, uh, pictorial representation of uh, this. So we'll see this in detail in the next video.